It's a beautiful evening, ladies and gentlemen, viewers of, of My Media Prime Television. Once more, we say good evening and welcome to joining us live in the studios of your number one sports station. Your reference point for sports in Cameroon, Africa and the world over this is Prime Sports on your champion channel, My Media Prime. In today's edition of the program, what makes the between? We shall, of course, be looking at faker elections with Samuel Etofi's former indomitable Lions, a striker drawing uh, Sidu Mbumbunjoya two times uh, to court. First, of course, uh, to a faker foot, and the drawings, of course, were referred to as inadmissible. This time around, he has dragged the Ethics Commission of the World Football Governing Body, FIFA. Also, in today's edition of the program, we shall be paying a very close attention to the build-up to Africa Cup of Nations Total Energies 2021 to be hosted by Cameroon with Mola and the trophy making a national tour in the country of the indomitable Lions of Cameroon. Also, in today's edition of the program, we shall be looking at the CAF Confed Cup and the qualification of the Katonites of Garua. What chances for them amidst the big six in Africa? We shall, of course, be looking at all of that and more, not to forget the dismal performance of uh, the club of former indomitable lion striker of Cameroon, uh, Samuel Etoufis, were talking of Barcelona for the very first time in nearly eternity. They've qualified for the Europa League. All of that and more shall be your package. One hour, 30 minutes of pure joy of sports on your number one sports station, My Media Prime. And for all of that to happen, beautiful friends of the television, we have experts, consultants, writers, reporters, persons with brains, the finest in our country and in this particular dispensation they shall be giving us beautiful updates and also analysis as well as demystification of all that which has been making news in our country within the context of sports first we have one of the finest in Cameroon's economic capital city of Douala. He is Mr. Enno Aku, a sports consultant he joins us body and soul in today's edition of the program it's a fine honor, a celebrated one to be with you in today's edition of the program. Maybe we're too early, but say you're welcome and happy Christmas. Thank you so much, uh, Rene. Good evening to you. Good evening to um, Molan Dumbe. Molan Dumbe. Mola is touring <laughs> the country, so we have one Mola with us today. Mm -hmm. And uh, good evening to uh, Jalapan Junior. Mm -hmm. He's going to be, he'll be pulling uh, the delegates from Southwest in the days ahead to, to, for Yaoundé. And uh, good evening to uh, my very good friend, uh, Commissioner Song Paul, who is currently in Kuseri. And uh, good evening to the entire Asobex 94 family. A good evening as well to Cameroon, the international community tuned to this very beautiful station to get updates about sport demystification and to get the very best of explanations as far as the complex ideas of sports concerned. We also have a Mola with us in the building. They call him Teke Jemia. He joins us body and soul sports writer for My Soccer 24. Special good evening to you, Mola. It's an honor once more to be and share this platform with you. Yeah, good evening. Uh, it's a good evening to uh, Enuaku and good evening to the great uh, the televiewers of uh, My Media Prime. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, that makes the different panelists in today's edition of the program where we, of course, shall be looking at a host of things that have made sport in our country. First, we are looking at uh, FECA elections uh, with uh, former indomitable Lion striker Samuel Etofi stabling his documents uh, to stand as the president of the prestigious institution governing football in the country. He has, of course, witnessed lots of obstacles in build up to that. The elections expected to take place this weekend in the country is getting fever high already. We shall, of course, uh, be looking at the fact that some candidates have already thrown the towel as they're putting their support for one and other. We have two candidates already who were thrown in their towel on the back of Samuel Etofi supporting him and thinking that he's got the litmus solution to whatever problem football in the country has experienced. But then Samuel Etofi has been fighting as well, campaigning, galvanizing support from different sectors and angles in the country, not also ignoring the fact that he is uh, drawing his uh, direct opponent to court He's draw, drawing his direct opening to the FIFA Ethics Commission for irregularities as far as sports is concerned. We shall first be bringing ourselves up to speed with edifications brought to us by Mr. Eno, who has been closely observing activities as far as this particular election is concerned. We shall, of course, be asking him to, for the edification of our listeners, tell us at what level we are 
as far as these elections are concerned. Mr. Enoako, you've been following the developments of these elections and you've seen all the controversies, you've seen the good, the bad and the ugly about these campaigns for the elections. Let's understand and let's place ourselves within the framework of the FECA elections. Yes, <clears throat> yes, sir, Rene. Um, it's obviously true that Samuel Eto has been uh, attacking, uh, dragging Bumbunjoya uh, with a lot of uh, issues these days. We are not talking only at the national level, we are also talking on the international level. Mm. But in my opinion, that's uncalled um, for. Why do I say so? We, I, we, I want an election whereby we don't have, um, we, we shouldn't be creating bad blood among ourselves. Let us have a true and fair elections without issues. Remember, I will take you back memory lane. Um, some years ago, uh, when um, um, Jean Baptiste Nguyenefa, the then president of uh, Renaissance Football Club of Ngumu, mm -hmm. was um, vying for the position of president, he definitely was uh, been um, having issues at the time. But he was actually trying to compete against uh, Ia Mohamed. And I can, I will quote the f late uh, Isumba Eyanga, mm -hmm. Isumba Depadu Eyanga, the president of Tone Football Club, who said in quotes, "Nous, il faudrait qu'il y ait un changement au niveau de l'Africa Foot." Mm. C'était le moment d'avoir ce changement au niveau de l'Africa Foot. But unfortunately, when the results were being published, Guinea Eva actually had one vote. But people like Antoine Depadou Esumba Eyanga, people like Njinu Hans, had already made proud declarations on how they definitely need a change at the helm of the Federation. But when the results were being published, it was a shock that Guinea Eva had just one vote. At the time, he was a he was the director general of uh, SCDP without publicity. He was the president of Renaissance de Ngumu. At the time, Renaissance of Ngumu was one of the best clubs in the country, taking aside the legendary clubs like Kanon Tone as well as Union. We could have the second tier where we had clubs like Renaissance of Ngumu because Renaissance was one of those few clubs that had little or no issues as far as payment of salaries for players was concerned. But at the time, we saw an, uh, a landslide victory of Ia Muhammad. Now, why am I bringing this memory lane? For us to see that there is just no need for Samuel Eto to drag Mbombo Njoya to court because in some few days ahead, we will, be, we will understand who has done the appropriate groundwork in terms of galvanizing the delegates to give him their support. Some few days ago, it was uh, actually appreciated the fact that Samuel Eto was accompanied to the north by Rigobert Song. Mm. That was an approach to galvanize the votes from the delegates. the delegates. Some few days ago, we saw Sinafok president, Sore Njita, with whom they have, he had been in a loggerheads with Samuel Eto, but he's coming today to endorse Samuel Eto in the presence of Jules Denis Onana, hmm. as well as other former footballers. Just, I think, yesterday, we saw how uh, Joseph Antoine Bell, Sa Majesty uh, Joseph Antoine, Antoine Bell, Bell, endorsing Samuel Eto. Those are the things I want to see in the, in the football platform, in the football arena. We shouldn't be thinking only of going to court. We should be thinking of governizing, getting endorsements, governizing uh, delegates in order to win the vote on the DD. We don't want issues where we are playing extra time in court. Mm. We want a scenario where whoever wins on that day manages football for this nation. We, had, we are tired of going to court. You remember so, for, since 2010, when Ia Mohammed actually was dragged to court and was dragged to jail till date, we have not had sleep as far as football is concerned. Mm -hmm. We have been having one uh, normalization committee, the first led by Joseph Owuna, later on a normalization committee led by 
happy. We had Tombi Aroko who managed for a certain period of time. Bombo Joyas came in and was uh, asked to step down, even though FIFA gave him the mandate to continue. Mm -hmm. We now, for, a, for almost a decade, Cameroon football has been uh, has been swingling. So that is what I really don't appreciate. Samuel Eto has the capacity, has the pedigree, has the personality to take change the uh, status quo of our football. He is a transformational leader. So I believe that we should focus on the DD. Let's go down and governize the delegates and win the votes. Mumbunjo himself has not been sleeping. We saw him some few days ago with some delegates, and uh, we saw uh, documentations that were being signed by delegates endorsing Bumbunjoya. Mm -hmm. We have seen uh, some candidates, like uh, some weeks ago, I said in the same platform that somebody like Justin Tago, I didn't see him to be a proper candidate to take our football to the next level. Mm -hmm. I said it in this same platform that people like Jules. Uh, okay. Uh, they didn't have the pedigree. He's throwing the towel at, at such a moment. Of he just tells us maybe they were going there to, uh, I mean, accomplish public opinion of the fact that they are going to fill the list. Reasons for us not to have the impression that the race is between Bumbunjoya and Samuel Etofis. Reasons why I really bother to talk about the other candidates because it's very clear. The lines are very clear. Are we are we headed towards? Uh, I mean, that line where we shall see more candidates throwing the towel. Of course, even on the D day, you will have people who throw the towel, and they will definitely. And I, I want to let you know, a lot of them are aligning with Samuel Eto, and this is my advice for Eto. A lot of these guys are aligning with Samuel Eto, not that they actually appreciate the vision of Samuel Eto. It's just that they want to kick Bombonjoya out of the scene. So we should be very careful, and Eto and his and his and his management team should be very, very aware and should be very, very, um, should have a very optimistic view, mm -hmm. knowing fully well that some of these guys, they are not really interested in ATO mm -hmm. being the president for the Federation, but we are in a situation whereby he is just the best candidate. We are going to be coming back to his management team. We'll also be looking at his campaign manager. Uh, you would be bringing us up to speed. For public opinion, has one or two reasons to you know, question his uh, campaign manager and the reputation of his campaign manager. But we'll take interest in you, Mola. Uh, why we have the impression that um, Mbombon Joya is actually doing a better campaign, galvanizing support with the different delegates, We've, we've more or less seen Samuel Etofi is taking pictures with persons who have very little or nothing to do with football. And one is left with the impression that what happened with uh, I know his, uh, um, Son Excellence, uh, Sa Majesté, Joseph Antoine Bell in 2018 may just be a repetition of that same lesson. But this time around, with Samuel Etofi, I mean, we've seen him in several occasions take pictures with the likes of the president of the Constitutional Council. We've seen him with Fabia Junior. We've seen him with many other persons who have very little to do uh, about uh, sports in the country. How would you interpret such a situation? Well, I would say um, he's uh, doing the, 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 the right thing at the wrong time because at this point in time, as a candidate running in for... Uh, a, a particular election like Feka Food, which is an indirect uh, investor of which, which uh, you are voted uh, indirectly by the, by some people who are choosing, you must try to target the people who are actually voting. And um, when he took uh, Rigobert Song and um, the lights of uh, others to the Lamidos of uh, the North region, it didn't change anything to show that the candidates for, from the north, from the northern region, actually gave their support to Momonjoya because. If you see a person like Alum Kunati, he is the first vice president of uh, Pumundria, and you, want, you, don't, you don't expect him to uh, influence his candidate to vote for Samuel Eto'o. He will tell you no, because he knows what he benefits from um, Pumundria. So I think that that should be his target, not the Lamido. Your target should be meeting Alum Kunati and telling him this is your project. So that, because Alum Kunati has influence over the three northern regions, we call them the Grand North, because mm -hmm. He is the one controlling that as far as Momoja camp is concerned. So I think that those are people you have to meet and make, the, make your intentions known to them about your project for the next four years. And um, looking at carrying, carrying Momoja to court, to me, uh, his advisors need to do their job because this, before, before now, we've seen situations whereby FIFA and CAF and 
come up already come publicly to back Mumundria. And that is a true fact. So you carrying Mumundria to court is a waste of time. Now why not stick to the realities ahead? Bumundi have come out clearly to say, out of the 10 regions, I have six. Now, what do you do at that point in time? You go offensive. You meet those delegates, like what he did, I mean, like what Bumundi was doing with the Southwest region. But now, though the Southwest region was not part of Bumundi uh, 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 list, but some candidates will vote for Bumundi in the Southwest region. Mm -hmm. That's fact. But, but now, Mura, sorry, look at, sorry, look at, for, look. sorry for intercepting you there, but more attention seems to be paid on the different delegates when we know that there are other persons to vote for. For example, we have the Coaches Association, the Footballers yeah, Association, the yeah, Refuse Association. I'm coming, I'm coming there. I'm coming, I'm coming and, there. And, and these persons could have a great impact on who eventually becomes the president of Feka Food in Cameroon. Yeah, they may have a great impact. But when you look at it so well, I was talking about Bobonja. He has six uh, regions. But one candidate in the Northwest region came out clearly and said, you are saying that the Northwest region is behind Momondria. But I think that I am a candidate. I have a one bullet. And that one bullet is not a Momondria. That is what he said. It's the same thing. So that's why you see, even Momondria himself, the sixth region which he has, not all the candidates or the delegates are going to vote for him. But when you look at Samuel Eto'o, he's not targeting the, the main delegates. Because when you look at the Vegas region, all of them has, has six delegates each. Now that is where you have to be targeting. Now when he goes to be endorsed by the former footballers, they have just, I think, just two votes. Or two, uh, yes, two votes. Mm -hmm. And have that particular sphere is not where you can harvest uh, delegates, though, yes, it may have an impact on the results. But I think that the main delegates which you have to contact is those who represent the regions. If you can grab the, 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 all the six regions of every region, or the six candidates, the six delegates of every region, then you are on a fine footing. So um, it is now boils down to the, 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 the uh, associates of Samuel to now do their work at this point in time where we have just, I think, two days or so to the elections to see that those delegates, like the, the, the person who opted that he is not from Bumundia, from the Northwest region, despite the fact that the Northwest region has 100% for Bumundia, but there is a candidate. Those are candidates you have to lobby and see how those candidates, are, those candidates can also influence the others to vote for you. I think that that should be the strategy of Samuel Leto, as at this point in time, and even move right up to the base of Bumundia, which is the, the West region, and try to go there and governize. Because what I saw with Rio Benson going to Lamido, the Lamido might He's just a personality, but he can't actually, he doesn't know anything about sports. That's why I say that Eto, his advisor should have told him that you are going to the Northwest, to the North region, meet a person like Alum Kunate, who has a grip over the, um, the 18 uh, delegates from the Grand North. The, he can have the influence to put those people under your camp. So I think that that is what Eto needs to be doing now, rather than taking Bumundia to court, because even if he takes Bumundia to the highest court at the level of uh, the International Court of, or the Court of Arbitration for Sports, they will not uh, disqualify Bumundia because the law has already made it clear. Bumundia was, was supposed to step down three months before the election. But since FIFA has allowed him up to this point in time, and you have sent uh, an appeal to the uh, Electoral Commission, and the Electoral Commission has uh, thrown a blind, eye, a blind eye to describing it as inadmissible. Yeah, and sending it down to the FIFA Ethics Committee. It is not going to work. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, the, ash, the advisors or the associates of someone they need to understand that those things will never work because from the chance of events, when you see they put somebody, the fourth vice president of CAF, mm -hmm. where he is, his administration has been declared null and void and is an interim and has been put uh, to hold an ex executive position at the level of CAF, it tells you that you can't uh, uh, remove him from, from, from where he is. And the same thing applies when they met in Kinshasa. They told him, it took clearly, you step down for this man to take over, for this man to, to, to run as election, uh, as, as, uh, as a loan, they, they don't candidate. Those are the indicators which Samuel Eto's, Samuel Eto and his entourage need to understand and take offensive measures by grabbing the minds of the candidates, I mean the delegates, so that at the end of the day they get the results. If not, then they might be working on banana peelings. 
They might be working on banana peelings. The what a reaction from uh, Take a Jamia sports writer for my soccer 24. For you who is just tuning in, you've not missed a muscle. We're on to lots of sports making event. Fake election of Samuel Etofis dragging Senungu Munjoya to uh, the ethics committee of the World Football Governing Body, FIFA. We're still looking at the build up towards the elections uh, come this weekend. And Mr. Enoako, we have this question. We, we've been looking at Eto's team, his management as well, and his campaign manager. When we see the likes of Ernest Obama, and when we look at his history and try to understand that, one is left with the impression that uh, some, you know, uh, persons, some delegates of uh, the English-speaking regions might want to reserve their comments, giving his uh, previous outings as well. And we should also note the fact that uh, Etof is called on his supporters this day uh, not to do a public demonstration, you know, uh, show, showcasing their support for him, saying that it would be a wrong step for them to take. When we look at all of that and more, we are seeing some white and some black spots. I would like to have a clearer understanding from you because you seem to be one of those Cameroonians who best understand Eto's team so we can better place ourselves. Yes, um, you know, in um, the World Cup in Brazil, we have somebody like um, um, Eto's campaign manager in the person of uh, Jean Bruno uh, Tanye. And um, he is uh, a fine brain in the world of sports. He actually covered, um, he was actually in Brazil. He covered the event. He's somebody who has been in the media platform for so many years. He was also a member of um, the. Um, the Media Arbitration uh, Commission in Yaoundé that was headed by uh, 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 Peter Isoka and currently been managed by um, Joe Chebonke Kalabopse. Mm -hmm. He was a member of that institution. So uh, he has been a member of uh, one of the media platforms here in Douala. And um, on that perspective, I think that um, Shambro Netanye is a fine brain in terms of knowing where we are heading to. But he too, unfortunately, uh, in a toast camp, he has somebody in the person of uh, a nurse, Nana Obama. Mm -hmm. uh, a nurse is somebody who is uh, full of controversy, mm -hmm. makes a lot of utterances without thinking about the geopolitical situation of the nation. Consequently, a toast doesn't have uh, in his, uh, within his rank somebody who actually represents uh, the geographical setting and polit geopolitical setting of this nation. Mm -hmm. So I don't think uh, a nurse is a fine brain in that perspective to stand along somebody like Samuel Eto'o to take us to where uh, Eto'o intends to be in the, fu in the future. Um, of, uh, it's rather unfortunate that uh, my, uh, um, Camus Martin mm -hmm. was actually having a lot of issues. If not of those, I think he would have been the best candidate, he would have been the best uh, sports person to support Eto in his vision. Mm -hmm. um, Ernest, in my opinion, though he had been um, the general manager of a certain TV uh, platform in Yaoundé, mm -hmm. but I see it to be um, Somebody with a lot of controversy around him. Uh, Mr. Eno, um, we got this text message from a viewer there. It's also in connection with uh, uh, the conjugations you've been giving. And it says, good evening, the panelists. Eto is not the right candidate. He was the person who championed Njoya to be president. And when he couldn't influence him from behind the scenes, he decided to now put his candidacy as a challenge. Bell had similar and even better plans for Feka Food than Eto. But Eto rallied a come against Bell. Now, when you see anyone who thinks everything good can only come from him, we have to be careful. In 2018, while Bia was 36 years in power, this same Eto called upon the youths to vote for Bia. Now he's preaching change. What makes him think the change will come from him? And the message is signed by Herman, who is watching us somewhere around Cameroon's economic capital city of Douala. Thank you very much for your text message. Uh, we, 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 have, we have an Eto here who endorsed the candidacy of um, someone many Cameroonians perceive to be old enough to you know, leave power for the youth. 
Eto called on Cameroonians to vote for him, and this is the same Eto calling for a change. Yes. Um, is that not controversial? Yes. Um, we need to look at things in a very different perspective. Mm -hmm. So time is a factor that affects everything. Context as well. Yes, because it's true. Eto stood behind Bombonjoya at the time in 2018. But mm -hmm. who was the candidate standing with Bombonjoya? At the time, we're talking of somebody in the person of Tombi Aroko, if not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Now, when we pair it up, Bombonjoya and Tombi Aroko, who would have been the best candidate at the time? Mm -hmm. Consequently, it had to throw his weight, I'm sure, behind um, Bombonjoya. Again, even uh, in 2018, um, Bombojoya had to, uh, we had an issue with Bell, mm -hmm. Bell, but of course, it should, it should be told, it had a one-on-one -on -one discussion with Bell, had a one-on-one -on -one discussion with Bell. But giving Bell's personality, one should, one should say, but there Bell, are many things under the umbrella. Bell himself is also a very controversial individual. That's what we're saying. Consequently, at that point in time, it needed to make a decision there, who should he stand for? Mm -hmm. we, and today, that's why I just made a statement that a lot of people are not going in for Samuel Eto. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going in to kick out Mbonjoya. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Same thing in 2018. A lot of people did not go in. People were bothered about it to have an endorsed Mbonjoya in 2018. But unfortunately, he was not the only one who actually endorsed Mbonjoya. Reasons why Mbonjoya actually won. Because Bell at the time had his manifesto, but he was, full, he was full of critics. Mm -hmm. Reasons why the delegates could not also stand behind him. Remember, even when uh, Tombi Aroko came in, at the time when Tombi Aroko came in, there were, were a lot of persons who were glamouring for other persons to have been the president of Africa Food other than Tombi Aroko. Mm -hmm. So we always have these things. People always come in to endorse an individual, but it doesn't mean that there is a hatred against another candidate. Mm -hmm. It's just an issue of what is their view at that point in time. Eto has actually presented, remember, Eto and Jeremy Sorenjitap had never been in the same boat. But this is the first scenario whereby uh, Sor uh, Sore Sorenjitap is actually endorsing it to outrightly and mm -hmm. saying that Sinafok is going to definitely be voting in for Samuel Eto. And Sinafok had even had a prior conversation mm -hmm. with Jules Denis Onana for him to step down since he's also a former footballer. Mm -hmm. Consequently, for all footballers to rally behind Eto means that Jules Denis Onana needed to step down. Even, even um, Mabuan Kesa discussions Mabuan Kesa if he had already made a public declaration of him stepping down and rallying and re requesting for delegates to rally behind Samuel Eto even though we are still waiting for him to withdraw his uh, his, his uh, candidacy at the level of uh, the electoral commission, commission. He, but he has already come out outrightly to say he's stepping down yeah, right for me, I think that if the viewer is saying that Eto wanted to influence uh, Bumbundria to do some uh, issues. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that it was a to Bumbundria not to end up the league and uh, appoint Cotton uh, Sport uh, and Fufu Club of Baham to go and play in the Comfort Cup? Was it the, was it was it to, was it to the one who took Bumbundria to um, make the Lions not to uh, uh, pay uh, the, the, the flight uh, which they were stopped for one day in Mozambique when uh, Chato had to pay money from his own private. Uh, 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 was it a total to Mbumonjia that the Lions should travel and arrive in Morocco at, at 5, 5 a.m. to play a match at 2 p.m.? Those are things that when you look at them, it tells you of a person who has failed. That's why I'm saying that the delegates who are the ones voting mm -hmm. should start thinking of the balance sheets of Mbumonjia, despite the fact that his, um, his reign was short-lifted due to the fact that Amadou Rahman Hamadou had to go to CAS mm -hmm. to like uh, filing a case the, mm -hmm. that the delegates were not giving time. But mm -hmm. I think that the delegates, I mean, the, the delegates do have to assess mm -hmm. the person whom they, are, they think well, that... Uh, Mola, but, but we have this text message here which uh, reads, uh, uh, Good evening, my dear panelists. I believe it's high time Cameroonians gave room for footballers to manage football in this country. And he adds that uh, Seydou is just an opportunist. 
This is Fali Roger writing from Cape Town. And he adds, Samuel Eto should be given the chance to take uh, football to higher heights. Now, giving a toast influence as public opinion has in uh, Bomboja becoming president of Fekafoot, and Eto again is seemingly the person taking Bomboja to the ethics committee of FIFA. Do you not have the impression that Eto could just be shooting himself on the leg? No, it's not shooting himself in the leg because what he thinks that he thought Bomboja would be a good president. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of two years, stay at the level of Africa uh, food, Bomboja was. And 70 percent uh, MS. So we could see if the facts speaks from them for themselves. The other him, the, the, the indomitable lions have gone down the dream. You, they, I mean the lionesses. If you see their performance through major competitions like the World Cup, uh, the uh, Afcon, and the Olympics, we never qualify for the Olympics for the uh, female uh, lions. You look at our performance during the Afcon um, when Cameroon played um, when Cameroon uh, played in Egypt. We were booted out at the round of 16. So when you look at our track record, both at the level of the national teams and even the under-17s, yes, the only successes he recorded was the winning the under-17 AFCON in mm -hmm. Tanzania. But when that same team went to um, <coughs> the World Cup in Brazil, they came out with their tail between their legs. Those are the failures. We should say all these things so that the delegates should understand that we are not talking here, despite the fact that we all want a new, a new person like Eto to be there because he has a brand. He can influence sponsors uh, internationally to come in and promote our football because of his, uh, his image he carries as far as uh, a celebrity and uh, a public figure. But now, we are looking at how can we break the invisible hand which has come in to destabilize our football. That is, the, I'm talking about FIFA and CAF here. Because when they start coming to say this candidate, candidate A is the one to be the president, and that is what is blindfolding people's eyes, saying that Samuel Eto is not fit to, 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 to run for, um, or for presidency. Rather, they, 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 they got to stick to the devil they know, like Bumondria. But I think that Bumondria's records have been there. Yes, he might have found a, a sponsor for the Women's League, but I think that that is not enough because our league has not actually got that, uh, that, 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 that flair it, it deserves. How can we say for the past two seasons we've been able to get a true champion for our country? We've been able to play the Cup of Cameroon for the past two years, the finals. Last year we didn't play, they say it was COVID. This year they made the appointments which they had to do at the level of uh, FECA food, uh, uh, general assemblies, found, found other FUVU, found Wadi to go and represent us. Kotong, what does that mean? That is, that, 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 is, that, that is amateurish in the highest level to find ourselves appointing teams to go and represent us at the level of uh, the, 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 the Champions League and the Confed Cup, whereas our league has not yet ended. Those are some of the failures. At the level of the national team, those are some of the things that we, under him, we've been able to publish a um, list of indomitable Lions players who are called and affiliated to their clubs. Why? Those players do have clubs. They have clubs. But because of the fact that under Mumonja, when he came in, coaches called players and affiliated them to the wrong clubs. And because the media was quick enough to pick those errors, this is now this is this explains why Konesawo now published lists without players affiliated to clubs. That is not professional. And it's happening under the reign of Mumonja. So those are things that these delegates must understand mm -hmm. that. Eto never influenced Bumonjia to do such things, and Eto will never do that. All right. We're going to be coming back uh, maybe in subsequent editions as far as these elections is concerned. Maybe we will be coming next week to say congratulations to candidate A, B, or C. Uh, Mr. Enoako, we are barely a couple of hours. Uh, looking at your camera there, what would you give as message to Cameroonians, especially media practitioners who are looking at journalists as well, sports journalists? There seems to be a fever about the whole FECA election stuff. And if care's not taken, we might have uh, journalists throwing and flinging blows from left to right. Would you have a word of advice? Would you have one word or two to um, the journalists listening and watching from across the national territory and why not international? Yes, uh, before I get to that question, Rene, I just want to say um, it's true, Eto is a fine candidate for the role based on his international pedigree. Eto is somebody who can actually open doors for Cameroon as far as FIFA is concerned, as well as CAF is concerned. Eto is somebody who can definitely uh, 
get uh, he has a lot of media attraction as well as uh, publicity mm -hmm. uh, a two is somebody who can definitely um, motivate companies to actually uh, endorse the federation in its activities mm -hmm. however however that it doesn't take away the fact that Bumbunjoya also mm -hmm. recorded some successes mm -hmm. yes that should be very clear mm -hmm. uh, in, in his reign, he actually won the, on the 17 Nations Cup in Tanzania. That mm -hmm. is also a fact mm -hmm. about Mbumbunjoya. It's a fact also that um, Mbumbunjoya is not the one responsible for scheduling uh, uh, the Cup of Cameroon Games. Mm -hmm. Cup of Cameroon Games are being scheduled at the level of the presidency. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on the uh, presidential protocol. Mm -hmm. So that if there were, uh, last year the, uh, we couldn't, there couldn't be a Cup of Cameroon finals mm -hmm. because of the COVID. COVID, it wasn't because of Bombon Joya. Now, currently we talk about Cameroon. Uh, we had uh, two teams who have been endorsed. I think that was Fovu as well as, uh, is it Kotong? Those, those were the two representatives that were being endorsed. Once again, it wasn't because of Bombunjoya. It's because the clubs actually were on strike because they did not receive the subvention mm -hmm. that the state actually pays. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the federation that was supposed to do the payments. Mm -hmm. It's the state that needed to do the payment. And Bombunjoya did everything possible to discuss with the club presidents to see that we could go back to the pitch. So those are not those were things which were beyond his control. Mm. So I cannot say uh, those were his failures. So he's a fine gentleman, which we have, I don't regret the fact that we have had him as the president of the federation. But again, uh, Eto is also a fine candidate. Reasons why we are talking about um, two gentlemen who have the capacity of taking this nation to a different level. Mm -hmm. Reasons why I'm so happy today that we have a lot of those other candidates stepping out, mm -hmm. stepping down, knowing fully well that we have two persons with proper pedigree to move our football to the next level. My advice to the journalists who will be participating in, the f in some few hours, uh, probably in, uh, in Mont Febe, yes. um, we shouldn't be partisans. We should focus on facts and figures. We shouldn't go there with so much emotions. Mm. We should go there with the mind of covering the event. Because uh, there's, a lot of this, there's a lot of tendency of always wanting to pick sites, of trying to, um, uh, people have personal uh, squabbles to settle. I don't think it, this is a, it, it's not the right time. Because a lot of journalists are going to be influenced by so many third parties mm -hmm. who are sitting out there, who are not even delegates. Mm -hmm. So we should remain professional, focus on the canon of journalism, mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day, we should be supporting the candidate that wins. Remember, in Zambia, Kalusha Aboya, former uh, footballer, was a president. Uh, we have other nations. Uh, did they Drogba actually vied for the presidential role in, in fifth? We in know the Cote, results. In Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. We all know the results. So in one side, Kalisho Aboya was actually victorious as and a former fula, fu footballer. Mm -hmm. In the other side, it wasn't the it case. It wasn't really the case and many fear might uh, repeat itself. At the end Cameroon. of the day, what we want is for football to grow. To grow. All right, we're going to take a few text messages from our viewers out there with some appreciating the beautiful, the brilliant contributions brought by the sports brains we have for you in the building. And we have this text message, good evening, Prime Sports. Your contributions count. I'm loving it, Mr. Teke. Keep on with the education. It is uh, Emmanuel all the way from the Seaside Resort City of uh, Limbe. We also have this other text message in the studio tablet, which reads, good evening. Ask uh, that man Eto is not the right man. Since five years today uh, uh, that the people are dying in the northwest and southwest, he has never said anything. And uh, this is coming from Tonze uh, Joseph from Yawunde. Just also remind you of the fact that even Seidum Bumunjoya has not as much as we spat as far as the crisis is concerned. Please keep your contributions within the framework of sports and leave it at the level of sports. Good evening, panelists. Why is Eto? Why is it that Eto wants to change things only when he will be at the helm of Faker Foot? Footballers like him are doing wonders in their countries without having positions of authority. 
he should better tell us his hidden agenda message not also signed and of course we have this one al hajilo kanganje for boya uh, cameroon is a peaceful land i want it to to be president of fika food let cameroonian stand behind him that of course is coming from the town of legendary hospitality uh, a viewer all the way and we also have this uh, text uh, message which reads uh, good evening to all the panelists for me i think eto is good is a good person to become president of fika food due to his experience as a footballer and uh, determined to change football. Uh, good contributions of uh, the program. Greetings to Teke Jemia. It is a Tolo David Jr. watching us all the way from Boya. We thank you all very much for your outstanding contributions via text message, both on normal text, regular text, of course, and WhatsApp as well. We shall take interest as we digress onto something else in today's edition of Prime Sports. For those who are just tuning in, you're on to my media prime, and we are also talking about uh, sports issues in the country. This time around, we are looking up to, uh, to uh, Afcon with uh, Mola and the trophy parade in different metropolis of this beautiful country, 237. It is, of course, uh, almost 24 hours since uh, the uh, Minister of Sports and Physical Education, Professor Narcisse Mole Kombi, received the converted, th uh, the converted trophy alongside the, uh, the mascot for this uh, year's edition of the Africa Cup of Nations. And uh, we know that this day, the trophy was presented to the Prime Minister and Head of Government, Chief Dr. Joseph Dion Gute, and it has been making fever waves uh, across the national territory. You can, of course, watch the images on your screen as the trophy is presented to the Minister of Sports and Physical Education, who thereafter presented it to the Prime Minister and Head of Government. Ladies and gentlemen, we take interest in the build-up to, of course, uh, the Africa Cup of Nations Total Energies, and we're looking at Cameroon to play the opening encounter at the Olympia Stadium against Burkina Faso, a repetition of a fixture Mula best understands. When you look at uh, all this fever, you look at the build-up, what impressions are you left with? Take well, care. Cameroonians are so far ready as far as the uh, competition is concerned and you know that uh, it's one of the competitions with Africa's premier competition which uh, gather, it, it gathers the fanfare and when you see the, um, the, this is already the second stage to show that Cameroon is supposed to be the host. Uh, we were hearing of rumors by the former CAF Secretary General uh, Abdemba, who came out publicly to say that the, because of the new wave of the COVID-19, the the competition will be taken to Qatar, but that was rubbish by uh, f by CAF few few hours ago. So I think that uh, with the coming of the trophy, you know, it's a tradition that when a country is hosting the uh, a major event like the Nations Cup or the Shan uh, or the World Cup, uh, there is a, a tour of the trophy to so some countries, and it has that um, uh, it is 18 countries which the uh, the World Cup trophy has gone and um, Cameroon now is is now at the final destination which is Cameroon and it was received by the Minister of Sports which we would oppose as the president of the local organizing committee so he has to uh, endorse it and take it to the uh, Prime Minister's office and so it was a good fanfare and even the mascot too was also unveiled as far as the um, the, the commission is concerned to tell fans that this is already uh, 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 around the corner is one month from now exactly and so we all started with the uh, former footballers the former legends al hadi Diouf, who came in uh deep akem victor samoleto uh Besson were used uh, to market the competition some two uh, two months ago and now is the mascot now that is making waves as well as the uh, afcon trophy which has to be paraded to the various uh, uh, uh hosting cities as well as the regional capitals i'm talking of the uh, trophy itself and we have already seen some lights um, as far as the, uh, the teams are concerned. They have already started publishing their, uh, their uh, players for the competition. Malawi is one of them. They have already published, uh, I think, a professional list uh, ahead of the AFCON. And some countries have already started organizing friendlies, like Rwanda will play against uh, Senegal just before the AFCON as preparatory matches. So the countries know that all eyes are on the armpits of Africa where Cameroon is found and so they'll have to come in and uh, governize uh, uh, to see that we organize a successful outcome. So I think it is uh, a right step towards the right, towards the right direction and we hope, like what the minister said, um, the Olympic Stadium is going to host the opening and the closing uh, ceremonies of the competition. So we hope we hold him to high esteem. He's a professor and whatever he speaks is what we take as uh, observers. So we hope to see 
a successful AFCON. Whatever he speaks, we take, we take as the gospel truth. What a contribution, what a conjugation there of uh, Mola. Would not want to pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, viewers of this beautiful program, uh, to polemics surrounding the Olympic Stadium. We know, come what may, well, Olympic Stadium may host the opening ceremony of uh, the Total Energies 2021 Africa Cup of Nations coming up next year. But when you look at Cameron's performance as a sports consultant, how convinced are you that this trophy would stay in the den of the Lions? Mr. Enoako. Yes, uh, Rene. Well, before getting to that, uh, Mola will be visiting uh, different regions of uh, our country. Evidently. Mola will be parading the Babaju Bamenda Highway. Mm -hmm. We all know what it is. Mola will be parading the, the highway uh, uh, Bikoko Kongsamba. Mm. Bikoko be, Southwest. Yeah, Mola will be parading Dwala Boya. Mm. Mola will be parading um, Katsila uh, Mayosala mm. to Garwa in the days ahead. Why Mola also visit the Olembe Omispo Stadium. Those are some of the things where Mola will definitely visit. It's a shame because we should be very truthful to ourselves. The Minister of Sports and Physical Education, the President of the Local Organizing Committee, consistently told us we are going to receive the endorsement from CAF. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, on the 30th of November, we never had the endorsement. And if it did? On the th it was then postponed mm -hmm. to the 3rd of December. Unfortunately, on the 3rd of December, we never received the delegation from CAF to endorse it. Mm -hmm. We should be truthful to ourselves. The minister has been using proper conjugation to translate the message of our readiness. We all know that we are not Olembe or Mispa Stadium is still not ready as we speak. It's a shame, but it's a fact. Reasons why the Secretary General of the Presidency, His Excellency Ferdinand Gongo, who was also present in uh, Cairo some days behind, mm -hmm. went to endorse Cameroon's organization and also to endorse the fact that Olembe should definitely host. But again, he was not in conformity with the reception of that stadium in its current state. Mm -hmm. Because the current state is a safety measure for the population of Cameroon. We don't want a scenario where games are being played and a particular stance collapse. Mm. We don't want that kind of a scenario. Reasons why I did say that it would be more appropriate for us to take time to get the stadium completed in the right time. Mm -hmm. Because it stands a risk if we have to hurry and cut corners. I find it so unfair. I cannot accept with Mr. Jamia saying that whatever the minister tells us, we take it as we gospel take it, truth. It can be that. It can be that because we have seen a lot of declarations that have been made and we have seen a lot of counter declarations. And even the minister himself keep contradicting himself in his declarations made every now and then. I find it so unfair for the people of Cameroon for Mr. Njemia to tell us that we should definitely be accepting what the Whatever minister, the minister says. tells us. We are not at that level. Mm -hmm. We at this level, we are saying that we want to organize the Nations Cup and want to keep it. Because it, before we had just Amadou uh, Ijo Stadium, the Fandena, as well as the Dwala Reunification Stadium, and we have won trophies. We just recently won, we won Gabon. Mm -hmm. We won back to back in 2000, 2002. We were finalists in the Confederations Cup. We uh, lost against Egypt in 2008, that which, which was a narrow miss. Even though we never had those infrastructures, we actually won it. The Cameroon population is a sports loving population. Consequently, there's already the fever to welcome the competition and to welcome visitors in our nation. We are by that nature, it is within our gene that we love sports and we love football. Football especially. Reasons why we are all galvanizing our energy to see that it is a success. Remember, even in the Africa, uh, the ladies, it was a success, successful host 
in Cameroon, mm -hmm. successfully hosted in Cameroon, Cameroon. even on the on the uh, the 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 shan, the shan. when we Excellent. we watch games in limbo we all felt the fever even though the game cameroon was defeated against morocco 4-0 mm -hmm. we still saw how even at the dying minute of the game cameroon cameroonians had, hope. had hopes of something going to happen mm -hmm. we watched the games in japoma miss Paul stadium it was just so fun fair so cameroonians by their nature we love sports but it's high time for the minister to also understand that Cameroonians, by their nature, you don't take them for fools. Mola, you took on a very tough journey from the southwest to Littoral Region, where we are based. Tell us the condition of the road, leaving mile 17 right up to Bikoko. We get it. We've, we've had um, information from sources, credible sources, that the road is under repairs. We wonder what sort of repairs are being done on the roads. Yeah, uh, when you look at <coughs> the. Uh, that's why when I said uh, last week or two weeks ago, <clears throat> I made mention of the fact that we look at, we already feel since uh, now we are working now on a what we call, um, we should just allow things as they are because we already feel it. by putting someone like the Minister of Sports to be the president of um, the, the local organizing committee. This is a debate I had with other persons. And um, we should look at that the Nancy um, Kombi doesn't have what it takes. The person who put in there normally maybe fail to do his homework so well to see that you need somebody who is grounded <coughs> with project management and different investments. But when you look at the person who is there at the head, who controls all the shots in terms of the finances and other things, he doesn't master. He has never been to any FIFA organized tournament or CAF, a CAF organized tournament. And so putting him there was already a failure. And reasons why we are seeing the results which we are finding now. Now, we expected a situation whereby the various ministries themselves have already failed because we were involved directly. The Ministry of Tourism uh, and Leisure is also failing. The Ministry of Transport is also failing, as well as other ministries, public works. Those are ministries who the public health and uh, the others who had to come together to do their only two part, which they had to do, to ensure that we host a successful AFCON. Now, there seems to be a, a kind of, they are leaving it all to the Ministry of Sports, right? The Ministry of Sports is just there to ensure that these stadiums are put into place. But now, what are the Ministry of uh, Tourism doing in terms of the hotels and other uh, touristic sites? They have let, they, they, they leave them uh, just isolated. They're talking about the, the transport. Is uh, the transport is a very, very uh, terrible situation as far as the, the, the present state of our roads are concerned. Last year, the government was so smart enough to do what we call the patch kind of a thing, which they had to uh, carry on rehabilitation with the various roads. But I'll tell you that when you pass through uh, these various roads, which these post roads were being done, especially at the road between uh, Mutengene and uh, um, uh, um, uh, My Seventeen. It is a sham, but that was a road that was rehabilitated two months to the uh, start of the uh, African National Championship. Mm -hmm. Same with the roads uh, leading to a uh, mountain hotel coming down to uh, uh, the roundabout, I mean, uh, to my 17 motor park. It's the same thing. Mm. Same with uh, Limbe, uh, Limbe Buya. Those roads were rehabilitated, but now how uh, are du durable were those roads uh, as far as quality? There was nothing to write them about. We just left from. Uh, to do what I hear. The roads are not at a good shape. So those are the things that when we are organizing tournaments like this, you need somebody who has a groundwork of project management in all spheres and knows uh, how to do investment. Like I cited the case of uh, Qatar, the, 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 the Hassan uh, uh, Tawadi, mm -hmm. who is the Secretary General of the organization in charge of uh, the, 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 the readiness of stadiums in Qatar. Qatar almost now, the eight stadiums which they have built, Already, they, 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 just recently, they had to um, endorse uh, the, the one of their st st uh, stadiums. That is people you put in front of projects like like the, like, like organizing the Afcon or the World Cup. We went to South Africa. We saw Danny Jordan. He might be a politician, but we saw that he had had uh, experiences working with FIFA in FIFA in project management as far as football is concerned. He was the co-coordinator with the under 17. Uh, on the 20th uh, World Cup, 
a member of the local Galaxy Committee for the World Cup in Germany, as well as that of the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. Look at what he gave to the South Africans. The, 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 the beauty of Africa. We moved to Africa, you first of all think about the Soccer City Stadium in South Africa. Those are people you put. But since we have decided to go in for people who do not master the art of uh, uh, sports management, it becomes a problem. And reasons why we find ourselves in situations whereby the minister will tell you we are ready, but on the ground, uh, it's, it's nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. That is where we are start we started feeling. And so we now are just working now on let's just talk and see what it goes as far as the future the days ahead are concerned. Mr. Eno Ako, uh, beautiful contributions there have attracted the interest of many viewers across the national territory. And we must say that many are applauding you, uh, throwing lots of accolades on uh, the fine facts you're presenting alongside uh, Teke there. And we have this uh, person who says, good evening, I like your program. And kudos to the panel. It's uh, from Ayuk Valentine, all the way from Yaoundé, reminding us that uh, he has known you since high school 25 years ago. Uh, GHS Manfi would really have loved to have your contact there, but then oh, that would definitely be backstage. Mr. Eno um we, we are looking at Cameroon at the verge of hosting one of the best, according to popular opinion, Africa Cup of Nations. Uh, 24 uh, teams, 24 uh, countries to, rep to be represented. We are seeing innovations in Cameroon. The VAR to also be used maybe from uh, the first stage right up to the last we are seeing many innovations coming in as well. And this also happens to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, football tournament in the continent of Africa since the outbreak of COVID-19. How prepared is Cameroon? Definitely in terms of, uh, Rene, in terms of infrastructures, Limbe has 20,000 20, capacity stadium. We have uh, uh, 20,000 cap 20, capacity, uh, capacity stadium at Kwekong in Bafusam. We have um, the uh, 50,000 capacity stadium at Japoma. We have the 60,000 capacity uncompleted stadium at Olembe. We have, uh, uh, we even have the Douala Reunification Stadium, even though it's not going to host games. Mm -hmm. We have the Fandena Stadium, which is, I think, is 41,500 capacity stadium. So, in terms of the infrastructure, what about we, the roads? We have hotel uh, facilities. We have um, uh, training pitches. Mm -hmm. The Boyatan Green so Stadium, many, uh, Limbe, uh, Moligo, Moligo Green Sports Stadium, as, Limbe. We have more. so many of those infrastructures. Those are things we never had before. Mm -hmm. So, in, on that perspective, I think that this nation has actually done something good to provide some of those infrastructures, mm -hmm. even though they are not coming on a timely basis. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, while we are celebrating the fact that we have some of those infrastructures, but infrastructures don't stand alone. We, the stadiums are, is not a standalone activity. You must have this, the auxiliary activities mm -hmm. that go along with the stadium. Mm -hmm. For example, when you look on, your, on the, uh, the east outlet of Douala, on your way to Japoma, we all know. It's a nightmare as far as traffic is concerned because the road is still not completed. We have had the Minister of uh, Public Works, uh, Mr. Nganu Jumesi, made declarations of billions that were actually contracted to ensure that that stretch of road from village to Japoma is completed. But unfortunately, as we speak, it is still not yet completed. Works are still ongoing. It's something which is so unfair for the Cameroon, for Cameroonians because we all love sports and we all want to ensure that we give Africa just the best in terms of tourism. When you go down to uh, visit areas in the West, this is an opportunity where we should be showcasing some of the artifacts mm. that we have. And when in, we say Cameroon is Africa in miniature, in miniature, we should demonstrate We it should now. be demonstrating it. But unfortunately, the Ministry of Tourism that just defended one of the lowest budgets at the Parliament some few days ago, mm. and I asked myself the question, what are is the plans? vision? Mm. How prepared are they as far as tourism is concerned? Look at, uh, in terms of, the telecommunication network, even though some few years ago the Minister of Telecommunication, Madame uh, uh, Lib Linette, Linette, Minette, 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 uh, Libong, she, we contracted the whatsoever from uh, 
from Fortaleza of Brazil right down to uh, Kribi uh, Seaport, which is the base. But unfortunately, we are still talking about Camtel just being made sabotaged, some, sabotaged some and, few days ago. It's taking them almost eternity, almost for, eternity for it to be repaired. And we are talking about the verge of the African Nations Cup. And are we sure we are? And we not might not even have a solution to that. I mean, in the days have, ahead, before they have, they have gone, eventually starts. So those are some of the things that we, we I keep crying on a daily basis. That can tell you need to step up to yeah. ensure that our infrastructures are on point. Mr. Daino, we we know that telecommunications in Cameroon is almost a perennial problem. Let's look at health. This is a domain. This is a spot where it may just be a red card for Cameroon. Um, What's your assessment? In terms of uh, health facilities, I think that uh, the Douala General Hospital mm -hmm. was actually uh, um, so a lot of equipment we actually bought. Um, the uh, Douala uh, Gynecological Center in uh, Yasa mm -hmm. was actually up upgraded mm -hmm. to ensure that we have the most uh, upgraded equipment. But again, again, not everybody will be entitled to such facilities. It therefore means we should be talking about the, um, the health centers. That's where it begins. I can give you an example. I went down to get my COVID vaccine at, uh, at um, Bona Summer Health District. It was a shame. I couldn't even stand it. Because, and those are the areas, because where, what we are thinking about is we are looking at the A-grade institutions in terms of health. But we forget that the local individual, the man who lives Manfe to Dwala might not afford going to uh, the gynecological institution, mm -hmm. might not afford going to l'hôpital general, mm -hmm. but could afford going to the district centers. But unfortunately, some of those district centers are still wondering. We still don't have the best equipment in those uh, centers. Look at, um, if you go down to uh, other small cities in Cameroon, because we are focused only in Douala, and even in Douala itself, go around and check. When those who have been going to Logbaba District Center can tell you the, the, the duration it takes to ensure that you are getting tested for COVID. And COVID test is a prerequisite for entrance into the, into stadium. the stadium. If it takes you that long to get your COVID test, it therefore means there's a probability that, that you, you might not have much. actual uh, entrance into the stadium. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things which the state has to look at as, as soon as possible mm -hmm. to get the best technicians on board, to get the best nurses on board, and even train some of the students who are still in their final years in institutions like QS as well as other uh, professional institutions to give them the skill set that they can even do the test while setting up, uh, we could set up stands at the level of the entrance of the stadium and for mobile checks, for mobile, mobile checks tests conducted and, and all, and all uh, that which is uh, related fans to could easily have access to, to the stadium. Right. So in uh, my opinion, we, uh, in terms of health, we should definitely devise appropriate strategy. Devising appropriate strategies, a proposal, of course, uh, which happened to have been a question would have had for you there, but that was very smart of you. You got us one there. Um, we'll come back to you, Mola. Uh, you're already parading already. Thank God for that. Um, if you would have one word as far as Cameroon's preparedness is concerned, as we plan to take on our next topical issue, what would that word be? Well, I think that the Vegas ministry is involved. Uh, it's not a ministry of sports affair. Mm -hmm. where the Ministry of Sports have been left to carry on with the various uh, projects, the other ministries, tourism, uh, transport, uh, and, the, and, the, and the others held. Those telecommunications, because uh, the level of the, uh, providing the internet, internet, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the internet network as far as the various stages are concerned is, uh, is prime in terms of uh, the media coverage of the events. So all these ministries have to put themselves together. Yes, it might not be too late, but I think that um, the various ministries need to come together and start uh, creating awareness about uh, the, uh, the, the coming of the AFCON. With that, I think uh, we are going to host the, the, a successful AFCON. You know, we hosted the SHAN and as well as the, uh, the, on the, the Women's um, Cup of Nations in 2016, and they were all successful. 
uh, based on the fact that we had to come in and governize everything, put, at it, put it as a teamwork mm -hmm. for everybody. So I think that should we do the same, then we might organize uh, a very uh, successful AFCON okay. come the end of February. We have a text message in connection with the topic we have on board, and it says uh, talking about Cameroon's readiness in our country, uh, being the host of AFCON in just a month ahead. Dear panelist, when I listen to Mr. Enno speaks, um, so much behind him. When I think of the case where lights went out in the field of play, I was in the field here in Limbe when lights went off, uh, that had uh, the match stopped and uh, millions of people were watching. It makes us doubt how ready were they too. And he ends by saying, God help Cameroon. Message signed by Mr. Emmanuel watching us uh, all the way from Limbe, Southwest region of Cameroon. Ladies and gentlemen, for those who are just tuning in, we'll take you, of course, out of the country and we're stumbling into the continent of Africa to talk about the CAF Confed Cup with uh, the Katonites of Garwa. Kotong Sports securing the much needed ticket to represent Cameroon in the CAF Confed Cup. But then, of course, they're doing that at missed giants with 14 teams already clinching their different tickets last Sunday. We have the likes, of course, of C. Safien of Tunisia, 2020 champions uh, R.S. Berkani of uh, Morocco. We have Algeria's uh, J.S. Saori and Zambia's Zanaku, who all qualified on Sunday. The big question, ladies and gentlemen, is what are the chances of Kotong Sport? Remember, in the away leg of this particular encounter that saw them qualify last Sunday, they could hardly score a goal thanks to the efforts of their captain who had goals in both sides last Sunday. Kotong would certainly be representing Africa. But then, Mulawa, coming back to you, this is coming at a time when Kotong Sport had hardly, has hardly played a match as far as the league is concerned. We wonder how said who is the president of Kotong Sport Garwa. He's coming with huge vision. We saw him last season when he went uh, to the, uh, the off season and bought the best brains. Yes, we saw Cotton Sport having uh, winning the league and um, going as far as the semi-finals of the CAF uh, Confederation Cup. And this year again, they are still making that same strife. And you will see that this is the only team where they had to send Tony Tony to work alongside with Asen Bagafui. So it is league matches and they are, able to score, and they are able to score against that team mm -hmm. twice without considering the two legs. It tells you of a team that is well structured. Mm -hmm. But they will be um, in the midst of the big giants as far as Comfort Cup is concerned, the GS Kabili, whom they were in the same group last season. And so I think that right. Kutospo has uh, an upper hand, maybe uh, with, their, with their, their group. Mm -hmm. It's undoubtable that uh, in the local uh, scene, Kotong is the one who has been winning the league back to back. Un uh, but unfortunately, we are not having that reflection at the international scene. Yes, it's true that um, for, for, some, for, for some years now, there have been instability as far as the league is concerned. But going memory lane mm -hmm. for the past 10 to 15, 12 years, even during the reign of Ia e. Mohamed, Kotong was always the was always always the champion of the local league. But unfortunately, at the international level, Kotong was nowhere to be found. There is much which is expected from Kotong. There is much which is expected from uh, Cameroonians. We have all stood behind the cotton pluckers for so many years, and we think that it's high time for them to understand that much is expected of them. We are not, we are not thinking of the al -Ali. we are not thinking of the S faction and whatsoever. We are bothered about the cotton pluckers. Some years, history tells us that clubs like Oryx, Kanong of Yaoundé actually did it. So we expect Kotong to also do it. In our dispensation, Mr. Eno, we believe that experience is the best teacher. These players, as at now, can barely boast of any experience as far as domestic leagues are concerned. Unfortunately, my major concern is that uh, our players are still living in a very wretched condition. Our players are living in a very wretched condition. Remember, uh, there was a communique that was signed that gave the minimum wage range of players in Cameroon, mm -hmm. which was even below the national uh, uh, wage Standard. range. Standard. Again, 
it's unacceptable. Those are the things whereby our local football is not attracting the best grains in Africa. Some years ago, Rene, we watched people like uh, Sisi play in Cameroon. Uh, history tells us that uh, His Excellency George, George Weah played, played for, for Tone. Mm. Uh, Kofi Abred played for Tone. And we watched so many other players who came from Nigeria who played for Mount Cameroon. We have people like Ake Ambeno who played for Tiko United. We can, the list is long. Even in, uh, we have uh, Dauda Kamelu who played for uh, yeah, Koton, yeah, who is a goalkeeper of Niger, Niger, played for Koton. But it therefore means there is beauty in Cameroon football, but we need to get it well organized. We need to orientate our football in the right direction. We need to pump in money into football. Because if it, we, when we pump in money, we'll be having players, many more players leaving other leagues, other to nations to, to Cameroon. But it's unfortunate that the exodus is in the inverse direction. A lot of Cameroonian players leave Cameroon and go to countries like Indonesia, mm. go to countries like Haiti, go to countries like Bo Bolivia. Buswana. Bolivia. Burkina Faso. We have somebody like Alexander Song who just went for oh, Bujibuchi. Uh, uh, Djibouti. Djibouti. So it's, it's supposed to be the inverse. So, but for us to have the beauty of that inverse, we need to invest in our football. And when we invest in football, it definitely, it def on that perspective, will be, will be attracting good grains from Africa and they will make our clubs more competitive in the international scene. On that perspective, I think that the cotton, cotton blockers will definitely go somewhere in the nearest future. At exactly some seven minutes to the end of the program, beautiful viewers, we of course have a third or a fourth topic. Would really have loved to dwell more on that, but we shall be having just briefs from our best brains. We are taking you straight away into the UEFA Champions League and for the very first time for almost eternity Barcelona would be of course uh, trying to win the UEFA Europa League but they are sure to be doing that against the likes of West Ham United Arsenal Football Club and many others first things first Mola how did Barcelona find themselves where they are well it is uh, it's a problem of management and uh, it's rather unfortunate that the great Barcelona that we watched uh, during the 2010, 11, 12, right up to 15, uh, the 2015 season, is the Barcelona we are seeing. Uh, just uh, they will tell you uh, it's just the name that remains as far as the team is concerned. Well, it all it all started when the the team had to face a financial crisis, uh, the Spanish uh, financial fair play, which had to hit hard on the club for the fact that they were owing. Um, uh, they had a debt of 1 billion uh, euros, uh, which uh, was at the off-season and reasons why they could not give the star man, uh, Lionel Messi, uh, his uh, a contract with New World. And that played to the disadvantage of the team and the team had to struggle uh, with Ronald Koeman and the identity of the team is almost dying down the tiki-taka system. The, even the uh, La Marcia itself has uh, died down. We don't see those players like the Pedros who were coming from the La Masia, the uh, Brusquets who came from the La Masia and made the, the, the Barcelona team tick. But now the La Masia seems not to uh, be having that esteem it had uh, in the yester years. Reasons why you see the club too uh, is also failing because the, the identity of the club, the passing system is uh, fast uh, uh, going down. And uh, because they, they could not actually stick. Uh, with a, 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 a kind of, uh, let's say, go to the um, the market to get good players because of their financial uh, uh, issues, they tend now to get players whom they think uh, are, suit, uh, are best for their own level at this mm -hmm. point in time. So mm -hmm. they, are, they, they, they try bringing uh, Javier and Endes. Uh, yes, he has, you will find it difficult to actually put the team uh, at the top level, but I think it's going to be very difficult for Barcelona to rise up. Their management is to come up. Come up. M Mola here, Mr. Eno, is seemingly is looking at the issue of finance and the, uh, the inability of the team to get good players. But Barcelona, uh, over the last two decades, has proven to be one of those teams who really buy, they rather depend on their academy. But seemingly, the academy is not yielding the fruits it yielded in the yester years. What's the way forward? Yes. Um could be told that it, it was a time bomb from the way Guardiola 
managed Samuel Eto'o, the way Guardiola managed Ronaldinho Deco during that era was problematic. There was another period, the way Guardiola managed Yaya Toure as well as Keita, Sedu Keita after Eto and uh, De Deco and Ronaldinho left, the issue Keita's, uh, uh, as well as Yaya Toure came up, he poorly managed them. Consequently, there was already a bad aroma, that fever roaming ab around Barcelona. When Guardiola left, Tito came in. Unfortunately, Tito contracted cancer and they later on passed on. We now saw the transition from Guardiola to Tito, which wasn't a success. And because of the bad environment that had already been created by Guardiola with the fact that key players were being sent, sent off when the La Masia yeah, they, players they were not, not yet sent. ready. Yes. Consequently, that transition wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Remember that Iniesta came in when Xavi was the main midfielder. And he copied. And, and Edgar David. Edgar David, while he was there, Xavi learned from him. Mm -hmm. When Edgar David moved to Tottenham, Xavi became the main man. And Iniesta came in. That was, was, that's what we call succession planning. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when Guardiola came in, took out Eto, Deco, and Ronaldinho, and was counting on Messi. But Messi alone couldn't do the magic because they were not preparing the transition for Messi. Reasons why today Messi has left, there is definitely no backup. There is no backup. So uh, when we saw Tito came in, Tito came in, it wasn't that balanced. They struggled, won some games, won, won some titles, but they were not that uh, bright Barcelona that we saw in the, in the early years of 2000s. Consequently, there became this fraction. Mm -hmm. uh, Abidal became the director of sports and started having issues with Lionel Messi because he started preparing his successor. His successor. Unfortunately, Messi was not comfortable with that. with that aspect of preparing his successor, for mm -hmm. which is a natural phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And reasons why today we have, oh, we, it is evident that Messi living, there have been no succession, succession plan, and everything is falling apart. Mm -hmm. Again, what the Chino Achebes did say, things the fall apart. The center can certainly not hold viewers, lovers of sports. This has been your reference point for sports not only in Cameroon, not only in Africa, but also the world over. We have been a fine team coming all the way from My Media Prime Television. And the program you've watched and listened to has been Prime Sports. It comes up every Thursday from 9.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. In today's edition of the program, we took you through a marathon rush as we saw what made sport this week in the country. We began with fake elections and Samuel Etobis dragging Seido Mbumbunjoya to the Ethics Committee of the World Football Governing Body. Thereafter, friends of the television, we took you to another mouth-watering uh, topic, which of course was Cameroon's role up to the total energies 2021 to be hosted next uh, January. And also in today's edition of the program, we talked about the CAF Confed Cup with Kotong Sports securing the, mo the much needed uh, ticket to represent Cameroon in the group stage of the CAF Confed Cup. And also we looked at uh, the UEFA Champions League with the dismal performance of Barcelona. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you all very much as we plan to part ways this evening. First, we extend our gratitude to you, Mr. Enoako, for taking out time off your busy schedule to be with us, counting to be with you in subsequent editions of the program. Thank you so much, Rene. Thank you to um, Don Benjamia. Good evening to my very good friend, Dr. Ferdinand Abangma, as well as Quentin Victor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mula, you're really touring the country. Take care, uh, Jamia. We are very glad you also took time off your previous schedule and traveled all the way from Buya to join us in today's edition of the program, uh, Prime Sports. Yeah, it's a pleasure again uh, to share a platform with uh, Enwaku and uh, I hope the listeners enjoy it. Like I always say, the best is still to come. The best, hopefully, is still to come. Eyes, of course, are tilted thoughts this weekend, Saturday. We will know who would be president of Cameroon Football Federation, Fika Hood. I've been Bishop Renesa, thanking you all for listening. Until we meet again, remember there is a rebroadcast of this program coming up on Saturday at some five minutes gone past 11 a.m. Don't go anywhere. This is your space. This is your space. 
keep enjoying other programs on my media prime television